Elizabeth Taylor is one of the most famous actresses in cinema history, but she's known for more than just her acting skills. She was a world famous beauty and a tireless AIDS activist, and she's in my favorite celebrity wedding photo of all time. Liz Taylor knew about weddings. After all, she was married eight times, twice to actor Richard Burton. But in spite of all those tabloid selling relationships, her greatest love affair might have been with jewelry. I know mine is. She literally wrote a book about it called My Love Affair with Jewelry. Her jewelry and gemstone collection was one of the most impressive of the 20th century, and she didn't keep that collection under lock and key. Liz Taylor wore the pieces out and about for decades, sometimes even as part of her costumes and films. Much of her jewelry was gifted to her from various husbands, some she bought for herself or others, but almost all of the items have incredible stories attached. Very sweetly, one of the first pieces of jewelry she ever bought was for her mother, Sarah. Little Liz was a child actress with small parts in a few films in the early 1940s, but she got her first big break when she was only 12 years old and cast as the lead in the movie National Velvet. Now, a working woman with cash of her own, she bought this brooch as a Mother's Day present. Makes me feel guilty about how I spent my first paycheck. Of course, it's costume jewelry instead of a brooch crafted with real diamonds, but this early purchase ended up sparking a lifelong passion for collecting the good stuff. There's even video evidence of Liz Taylor receiving some of her most famous pieces. Her husband at the time, producer Mike Todd, gave her this diamond and Burmese ruby suite from Cartier while she was swimming in the pool and a friend just so happened to catch the moment on camera. Branded with names like Cartier and Bulgari, her taste in jewelry was clearly pricey. But Liz Taylor is famed as a collector in large part because she had a good eye for beauty and craftsmanship. In fact, not all of her favorite pieces required stepping out with a security guard. This favorite pair of earrings was made of paste. Of course, her husband Mike later got them copied and set with real diamonds. Speaking of real diamonds, this out of control gold and diamond necklace featuring a lion with emerald green eyes is not a subtle look. Created by Van Cleef and Pels, it's known as the Granny Necklace, purchased for Elizabeth by Richard Burton after the birth of her first grandchild, when she was a mere 38 years old. Wow. See, those eight marriages started early for Liz, and she was a young mother herself. So, ta-da, a granny necklace before you hit middle age. Pretty cool, huh? One of the great things about fine jewelry is that the designs can be as whimsical as your imagination allows. Just check out our Hip Hop Chains video for further proof. And this fun jewelry suite owned by Taylor is known as the Daisy Series, again from Van Cleef & Arpels. She borrowed it to wear while being honored for her humanitarian work at the Academy Awards. And she must have liked it because she later bought it. Some of the gems in her collection were real humdingers. Richard Burton bought Liz the Krupp Diamond, a 33.19 carat gemstone she wore as a ring, which is pretty much the most baller way to wear a diamond that large. Needless to say, she had some pretty strong fingers. Another huge gemstone she owned is even named after her, and Richard. The Taylor Burton Diamond is 69.42 carats and was bought by Burton for just over a million dollars. Here she is taking it out for a spin at the Academy Awards. After they split for the second time, she sold the diamond with part of the proceeds going to fund a hospital in Botswana, the country where their second marriage took place. She also owned gemstones with historic backgrounds. You can even find them in the portraits of royalty. One of the most famous pearls in the world, La Peregrina, has a history that's more than 400 years old. It is thought to have been owned by Mary I of England. And of course, it eventually ended up with Elizabeth Taylor. Richard Burton, there he is again, bought it at an auction as a Valentine's Day gift, a $37,000 Valentine's Day gift. Wow. More recently, in 2011, it was sold again for $11 million. Because the woman who stipulated in her will that she arrived 15 minutes late to her own funeral can't help but be cool, Elizabeth Taylor always considered herself a temporary custodian of the jewelry she owned. And because you can't take it with you, an auction was held at Christie's after her death. Between the gemstones, fine art, fashion, and film memorabilia, her estate brought in, hold your breath, almost $157 million. It was the most valuable sale of jewelry in auction history, and the money raised went to her trust and AIDS foundation. How much money would your estate sale rake in? Put a dollar value on your life down in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on the topics we discussed today, check out the links below. Thanks for watching, guys.